So, what are your thoughts? Uh, I never would have guessed a special hero's banner would be this. Uh, yes. My thoughts are yes. All right, that is all I need to know. And to all the people who said it wasn't going to be Tharja, I don't know. I called it. I'd suck it. Okay, that's that's. I'm among them. Even though I'm a huge fan of Tharja, I could not see Tharja at all. It just didn't make sense. It was the hair. The thing, yeah. the, the thing is, like, it was so obviously Plagia for me because of the bow on the right side. But I was just like, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. I don't know exactly what was Plagian about the bow, but I can oh, see it. You and couldn't see the here design? we are with the Grim Lil Festival. No, I did not see it. I saw the design in the bow, and that's what I called out. Oh, maybe I missed yeah. that. Let me yeah, look. it's literally. I, I knew there was, knew it's there was, was something eye. about the bow that was strange. I couldn't just tell it's Plagian. I just know look, it was. Look, isn't the design Plagian? Look at the bow. It's not exceptionally. I mean, it's more like, obvious it now, but in the silhouette, it wasn't anywhere near as obvious. It was really? So it was so. That's the one thing I called out. I was just like, it's so obvious. But then I couldn't think of any Plagian archers. That's why. Well. Because also, there aren't any, and the only actual Plagian on this banner is Tharja. Exactly, like this entire banner is so unexpected. I couldn't, like, this opens up everything. Literally opens up everything. Also, by the way, prior to this, people were like, Nims, don't you get it? It's the spy banner. <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> no. We've done pirates, we've done ninjas. I don't know how spies fit in that. No, that's too much for me. Like I didn't, I didn't think it was spies. It literally just meant from a faraway land, which is plug. It makes sense, but like, the spy yeah. banner. No. I mean, by nature, the Grimly are more of an assassin-y kind of group, anyways. So it kind of makes sense, but yeah, just outright spies. This is not. Yeah. Okay, but this is still weird. We're literally like worshiping. Everyone's just worshiping Grima now. I mean, <laughs> what? I mean, have you seen a Halloween Grima? Why would you not? Okay. Look at that ass, though. Okay. By the way, there's nothing special <laughs> about Halloween Grima's ass. It's a normal ass. She's just pumping it out. Don't get fooled. <laughs> the the bigger thing for me. Wow, we're talking. Okay, that's a bad way to. Uh, that's a bad segue. Anyway. The. the the more significant thing for me, though, is just like this is such an interesting banner. Like that opens up the possibility for everything. Even though like this, the concept here is just amazingly weird. Like celebrating Griba. I think this is one of those times. I think what I'm coming to establish is that January and times like these are just there. Throw a theme on the board and we'll stick to it. It's kind of months where it's not a holiday seasonal everybody expects. It's a filler it's a banner. No, Within it's not quite. Theme, but it's a, it's their time to experiment with new themes, which I really like. So, like Hot Springs. Now we got Grima. <laughs> We're adding the Ninja or the Picnic Banner. It's a nice little pirates flavor. Pirates. It's nice. I agree. It's nice. Anyways, I do like this banner. It's, it's. It opens up like for me the biggest thing is just like what does this mean in the future could we have something similar for a lot of other like could you see like a valentian banner kind of thing like kind of themed banner like you could see a bunch of potential banners because a lot of like there are a lot of cases where people just worship a certain house or a certain deity so i, I could see one for uh the Mila faithful the duma faithful popping up in the future as well so I mean, it, it really does just open up a lot of different ideas, and those two are just from the same game. Mm -hmm. I mean, the big thing to note is the cultures that are in particular are most distinct, which is why I can't I can't imagine exactly I what I would say. Because, like, for example, Duma now. Faithful and Mila's adherents, they're not exactly different characters in the aesthetic. different characters in the Garrick Mock Academy outfit. That would probably Why be not? a they tackle immediately. I can't believe they haven't done that theme already. That By the means. way, I've seen so much fan art of that. People put like Tiki. There's a guy or who Noe. just does it. Yeah, there's oh, there's literally, I keep seeing it on Twitter. There's literally a guy who just keeps putting everybody in the three houses student outfits. So like, I'm all for it. It's, that's a really good outfit, but that's actually a thing. Yeah, I'm, I won't be surprised if I ask to tackle something like that in the future as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
that said, oh man, this banner, this banner. Uh, I, I'll, let me ask you guys this first. Hot Springs banner or this banner? Which one's this better? Banner. I would Do say I this have, one is better. Do I even have to say anything? Because the, the thing is, like, the Hot Spring banner kind of made sense in the respect of, like, if anybody's ever watched anime, like, a lot of anime's extra episodes are a Hot Spring episode or a Beach episode. So, it's always between those both. two. Huh? And we, and we get both in this game. Yeah, well, uh, we get both in this game. Yeah. Most of um, our, I, it looks like most of our are saying this one pretty freely. Like, I, I, honestly, the Hot Spring banner are disappointed. By the way, like it, I, I'm, I'm saying this one is better than the Hot Springs banner because it's this is not Fate's Royals spam. Yeah, that is true. They were. Uh, yeah, not to mention the units. But are you going to get Scott Pilgrim on Switch? If so, I demand you to play with me. Uh, so I, isn't it on Steam as well? If it is on Steam, I, I pick it up on Steam. I love Scott Pilgrim. It's my favorite comic book of all time. And that's one of the reasons like I pick up the, picked up the PS3 to play that game. But yeah, I am interested. <laughs> that's a funny thing to ask. Yeah. All right. But yeah, let's go over the heroes. All I can say is, God damn it. Yeah. This is uh, why do I the... why do they have to pray to my particular wants with this banner? Chat, yeah. here's the thing. This, like, this is some of the most provocative art that we've seen outside of summer banners. And here's the thing. They're not Close even enough. it's not like in particular that they're trying. It's just like Arjun's outfit was always like this. Like Versus outfit was always like this. Like it's just how they're dressed. It's like nothing eccentric, you know? Right, it makes sense. So, it's just so Henry's dressed, mm -hmm. kind of. Three houses sauna banner, <laughs> probably you at some point. You can get your sweet honey biscuits. That is, is going to make a three houses sauna banner sooner or later. A sauna banner, considering the fact that the yeah the sauna is a big thing. <laughs> sure. All right. Here's All right. the thing, chat. I don't know whether I can find the orbs for this banner. I I am excited I for this to. banner. It's just February. We have we have our uh, anniversary for Fire Emblem Heroes. We're gonna have a bunch of banners at that point, and this is we have a legend legendary banner mythic. coming in like a week and a half. Mythic. Oh, mythic. Yep. It's even more important. Yeah. It's gonna be so competitive for your orbs, but it's. I love uh, Tharja. Yeah. I love I Tharja, and this entire banner is just so interesting to me. Yeah, the Tempest Trial bonus banner starts at reset as well, so we'll find out what our seals are. And what Mail Chris is bringing to the table, which, fun fact, Mail Chris is the only character I don't have in this game for Arcanea. Since if we count female and male Chris separately. So, <laughs> convenient, I guess. Yeah. Um. I just want to say, I am suckered into pulling on this banner because. As a Legion fan, I have to go for Katarina. <laughs> and saying male Chris better not outclass Gunther. Gunther's existence assures that that's going to happen. I'm sorry, who even uses Gunther anymore? Don't mention his name. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's go over the heroes. Um, that's actually pretty funny because oh, male Chris would actually compete with uh, everybody. Groom Marth as well. It's funny. You compete with everybody except Pyro Veronica. Like, just in general. Keep in mind, there are seven Axe Cavaliers in the pool right now. Total. Mm. And two of more if you count Oter and Gustav, who will never be in this game. We don't even have ten Axe Cavaliers, so Male Chris immediately has a role to fill. Okay, I'm just gonna apologize. Uh, somewhere along the lines, I just looked at Tharja and I stopped listening. Uh, this, you know what? she is... You're not wrong. Oh, oh man. I, I already liked her loved her base outfit, but this just takes it this to another level. This art is it like I I originally thought that okay Tharja and it looks like she's in something that would be fitting for a dancer. Oh, okay. I thought it was a dancer too. Yeah, yeah, especially with that feather headdress. Right, like right over here. Oh, uh, also real quick, the artist mm -hmm. got it down packed. If you drew Tharja without her bangs shadowing her eyes you screwed up yeah guns <laughs> yeah, okay there but i mean honestly that mm -hmm. that might not that might happen with gunter like 
KC Supersonic saying Tharja looks gorgeous and not even a big Tharja fan. It's like all of the art for this banner looks really good. All of the mm-hmm. neutral art, at least. It's like it's not even a huge change of design for Tharja. Just a Tharja couple small adjustments to make it. It's more fancy. decorative. It's more ceremonial. And holy shit, it works. And it's a different artist. That's the big. That's thing. actually here's artist. the thing. I really like base Tharja art because I thought they captured the essence of Tharja. Like. They got her attitude down packed. Like she's mm-hmm. the way she looks at you and the way like you could tell like there's some mischievous in her and then you could tell she's just like not quite right. <laughs> but they got yep. down here as well. Like there's a bit yeah. certain creep fact creep factor that you gotta, gotta always include with Tharja, despite the fact of how she looks. You gotta have that unsettling feeling. They got it down here too, while making her even more like beautiful <laughs> Which, it's it, a weird that's thing. the big thing yeah that's the big yep. thing they kind of tried to go further with that beauty aspect of tharja yeah which they seem to do progressively over the years from yep. heroes to later heroes mm-hmm. guys it's clearly a rage at all since she's not a red tongue i actually like this also, more yeah huh. well uh, as toasty just pointed out tharja that isn't red our first actual tharja that isn't red. See, this is the problem. If they actually made her red again, it's triple red Tharja. Quadruple. Base oh, shit. Oh, Christmas, shit. And now here. I'm sorry. I forgot about Christmas yes, Tharja. You can have a team of nothing but Tharja now. Correct. I mean, a lot of you. I mean, people would argue I mean, you could do that with Rajat, but yeah. Tec- you technically yeah, yeah. could with Kyria anyway. Oh. Right. Oh, with shit. You're right. All. Technically, it's an all red mage Tharja, where two of them are slow and two of them are fast. <laughs> yeah, so look at it that way. Okay, well, all, <laughs> all the Tharja fans. Do, chat, do you argue that counts as alts? Because if you do, all, she's among the top alt characters in this game all of a sudden. If you count Rajat, uh, if you count Kyria, if you count I Rajat can't and Kyria, that means that there are six versions of Tharja in the game, which is only one behind Camilla and Lynn. Yeah, I mean. It really depends on the semantics, but realistically, you could just say that it's six at this point. Okay, fair. Fair, 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 fair. All right, but with that said, let's finally get to the hero. I still can't believe this is an inheritable weapon. Legion Torch. If he does not adjacent to an ally, inflicts the penalty on foe's attack resident in combat. It goes five plus any current penalty on each of those stats. You know how incredible that is? Didn't we get like something like attack res minus five? Or is it, no, it was speed res. Speed res. Uh, yes, summer. we got um, Flora Guide, which is speed res minus five to foe perpetually. But the thing um, is, the only thing yeah. they added was not adjacent to an ally, and it had greater yeah, capability. Yep, this, this, is, is, um, this is uh, anti-unity. Think about the pirate banner. This is the inverse of that. Yeah, that too. So, as opposed to the pirate banner, where you neutralize the foe's buffs to, in this case, attack res, you're doubling down the penalties of two attack res on the foe. With the same condition. Hmm. Yep. Which makes it a surprisingly tanky weapon. Of all things. Yeah. Tharja and Katarina are going to be weirdly tanky if you invest in their defense. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that pointed out to me. Like that was a big thing, t- t- like for me. It's just like, wait a second, they might not really need like desperation. Like they could legitimately just run a B slot chill, and then they'll be they'll be perfectly fine. Or yeah. just you know give them attack smoke as the seal. Right. Like also, that's why Raphael has it. Why not? Yep. That's also like such a shame because like I'm so glad they gave her speed res ring, but at the same time the smoke factor would have like synergized better. So. There are no good smokes with the panic smoke. The, the thing, the thing is, point. though, yeah. I mean, it, uh, if you have attack smoke as the seal instead of the C slot, then if you give her attack res or attack speed rain, for example, that then stacks with her weapon. Right. Mm-hmm. If you want to get really silly, you could make her C sl- B slot into a seal. Like an actual seal skill, like seal attack speed. Oh god! <laughs> I was just like, I was just like, question one, question one. Do you be chills? No, you. <laughs> Legion, have you gone insane? Nobody uses seal. Anything. You want to double dip a unit? You could technically make them absolutely terrible. But they gotta survive first, and I think Tharja would wipe the floor with them. 
depends on how you want to do things. Oh, well, I mean, if you, you have a tax, a different unit. You know what? Technically, if for you have a tax smoke, is, well, the thing is, if you have a tax smoke as the seal, and then seal attack res for the B slot, then you're double dipping on attack, yes, but you're also ensuring that anybody coming in is going to be hitting like a wet noodle. Mm -hmm. For Roker Sieges, I can agree, but for anything else, that's that's a bit too much for me. Like that's too much setup, too much. I mean, for a melee unit, it's not even as bad because you could enemy phase, not potentially not kill, and then go back in for a player phase kill. Yeah. Which, these are really good tank weapons, by the way, so if you actually want to make a tanky green mage, for example, this might be a good way to do it. Hmm. Yep. I also have a feeling that this banner is going to make uh, ignoring debuffs even more powerful. And... Mm -hmm. I I mean just ignoring debuffs, not reversing them like Fallen Earth does, or yeah, neutralize them entirely. Like instead of because that will ignore any any effect or any forced stat swing from the weapon. Right. Keeping in mind to this point, there isn't exactly a whole lot. Like broadly, for example, exploits penalties. Certain skills will go off of it. Now we have penalty doubling freely available, which. Keep in mind, this is basically the same thing as um, Kaze's, not Kaze, Saizo Star. Ah, oh, um, you're right. Yeah. You're, this yeah. is a, this is yeah. the new concept. Except even more. Oh God, pair any of these units with Layla. Oh, if you put Layla in. <sighs> if yeah. you put Layla in, give her panic smoke and attack smoke for C and seal. Or do attack and, and smoke, then depending. That too. And then just have her partner be Katarina. Congratulations, Katarina is now a tank. Yeah, Katarina will be... Fat, or it, just for the sake of keeping it here, Tharja, you run attack smoke with just dagger seven Layla or panic smoke on C with the attack smoke seal. Yeah. Suddenly yeah. Katarina th gets in. If they have uh, an attack, re uh, attack res buff, or Tharja, not Katarina, if they have attack res buffs of like plus six, plus six, now they're minus six, minus six. You got minus seven attacks and minus seven res from daggers, dagger and um, smoke. So that would be 13 penalty. So basically the foe ends up with a net of 31 and a penalty by the end of it. Yeah. If. Oof. But the crazy wow. thing is like, you could just take this off Tharja and then you can really make a, a build like that happen. Because the thing is, Arja's problem is that she's a flyer. She's going to inherently be a bit flimsy in comparison. And in, in a build with Plague and Torch, you could really just do, as you said, make a true tank scenario. Yeah. Like, let's take a look at our very limited green page pool because it's not a whole lot of them. Like the only person coming to mind is, like, Henry. Uh, Halloween green Henry. Page. Halloween oh, Henry. Halloween. Um, Fallen... <laughs> Fallen Leon technically could use it if you want. To oh be God, uh, that, that's a weird one. <laughs> if you want to be dumb, I guess you can make uh, that work. Oh, um, uh, La Rochelle. Some Halloween, Halloween La Rochelle. La Rochelle? Uh, she's. Uh, I think not she's that tanky. Yeah, I, I think she's she'd have the same issues. Not that tanky, but she would be able to use this pretty well. She's reasonably fast as is, so you could put a speed refine on the weapon, and then th that will just amplify her attack and defense from res to a point I, where she can survive. And then her attack is just going to get monstrously large. I'd She's argue. A fury that's also true. I'd also argue they they would have about the same stats just because of the generation gap. So it wouldn't really yeah. be an advantage. Um, Summer Levitane or Spring Camilla, if anybody is actually building those two, are both pretty tanky, especially Levitane. Um, Levitane is 38 HP, 31 defense, and 26 res. So. so vain. Or Sylvain with his 27 defense and 16 res. All I'm hearing is this is no, there's no clear character that could pull that off right now. Halloween Henry, like you mentioned, would be one of the best. 36 HP, 26 defense, 36 res. Yeah. That would be kind of good. Yeah, you could probably... The thing is, because of Plague and Torch, which was fitting because he's from Plague and so... Um, oh, yeah. That comes yeah. full circle. You could pull off a close Bowie. counter build with something like this. Yeah. Yeah. Bowie might be able to get away with using this too. Bowie. He's extremely defensively tanky for a green mage, but lacking on the res side of it. And also lacking attack. Yeah, Which, so I guess that res side helps. Res, so basically, yeah. you're getting attack def and res buffs. Effectively. Yeah. Keeping in mind, this is like having attack def, attack res running on a unit. 
without having picnic to leo oh my god a weapon that could actually lay, actually make a version of leo oh, yeah. decently good picnic leo 37 hp 27 defense and 28 res that could work yeah <laughs> 33 attack at base but only 21 speed but oh. i mean he might be able to use it to decent effect okay i, mean, I think we got too far I, I, i'm already not comfortable talking about killing tharja but now it's for leo of all characters bro <laughs> And the sad part is her kit is so offensively skewed, most of these units will not be able to take anything here that's valuable. Yeah, that's the thing. That's one of the reasons why the Russia example is kind of hard, because the speed resurrain is is what you have to sacrifice. Yeah, course, that's I mean, true. at least she can use Swift Sparrow 3, unlike everybody else I just mentioned, basically. True. We're all, yeah. like, sub-30 speed. <laughs> all right. But yeah, with that said... Picnic it's a great weapon that doesn't action. really have a lot of places in the meta right now. It doesn't. I think in the future when we get a, like a really good armored, uh, armored mage. I mean, it's, it's the last one was for green armored mages, anyways. Last one was basically yeah. Henry, so it's it's yeah, a long, Henry. long ways away. So Henry is the only one. Jesus Christ, for real? It's still that's he's a Gen uh -huh. One, isn't he a Gen One? Oh no, Gen. He is the Gen One armor. Well, okay, Gen Two, but. There was no Gen 1 for his class. Yeah. 165 BST. We have Mage Infantry with as much BST as Henry does. Yeah. So that's 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 the reason why I'm like, this is slightly a uh, bit disturbing, but yeah. It has great potential. Works on Tharja, but the meta will make it better. Thanks, Gamings. Oh, for those who don't know, I'm summoning later tonight, so it, this we're actually right after this, but whatever, you guys get it. Yeah. Uh, all right, but with that, um, I think the easy B slot is, of course, desperation. And I think if you really wanted to do, you do like chill, chill attack and like attack defense one. But the, the thing is, you, because it's Starja, she might have just as much defense as Res, so. Or more defense than Res. Not, not sorry, not Bon, uh, solo, sorry. I'll sit. If you want to get silly, then technically oh. you could take uh, Velt's chill Res. That just dropped mm -hmm. not too long ago. Yeah. Or somebody who has chill res at four star because I think it's five star in build. Ooh, Something like that. Star. Yeah, but you got some easy combinations. Her kit is really, really clean. Yeah, no, it, it's a very uh no, it's four star in build. So if you have four star build and you don't want to use more than one copy, which you really don't have to, chill res makes a good substitute piece slot. Alright, I just, just wanna say easy slot. I I'm upset. I'm so upset too. Because like they, they made me so happy, so happy about Tharja. Then they smack me on the backside of the head and say, oh, actually Katarina could do everything and more. Yeah, I mean Tharja is the green one, but I'm upset because I have to pull for her. I have no choice. <laughs> also, um that thingy that she's like making levitate looks like it's straight up straight out of Yu-Gi-Oh. Like Yeah. Yeah. Kind of look well if you all sort of ignore the sides. It kind of looks like the uh, symbol of the Sheikah from Legend of Zelda as well. I was also gonna mention Zelda when it comes to that. Oh, yep. okay. All right, so there are quite a few things. So Katarina finally got her alt, one of the most deserving characters at this point. They didn't have one, being that she is almost as important as Martha in her game within reason all right i have to go for her because she is My a part of aramia's assassin's creed series and she's great oh whoopsies um pre she, she's gonna be creepy i don't think she's not gonna, <laughs> i think that's just always per, part of personality of uh, tharja oh yeah i don't think it's gonna be like with um bridal and winter where she tries to impersonate something she isn't yeah so I think this will be the proper Tharja. The Tharja we always wanted, or we always deserve. Do we always deserve? I don't know. The Tharja we always wanted. Right. All right. With that said, uh, this is the reason why I say Katarina is better. Fel Flambo is just basically Tharja's weapon, but it's now all stats and special trigger cooldown count minus one. And of course, since it's a perf, more attack as well. It's literally just better in every way. You know, I kind of forgot it had slaying. And now I realize that this is going to be insane. This barring is barring the fact that this is a solo flyer. Well, okay, but they're wait, they're both solo. Well, that's yep. the other problem with Arja, but 
specifically for Katarina, you have to worry about the fact that gliders don't like being solo most of the time. That said, the effect you get out of being solo on Flail Flambo is just too broken for it to be considered a battle penalty to go for. Right. And the other thing was, she got attack speed solo, which I would argue would be better than Swiss Sparrow 3 on Tharja, just because mm -hmm. your tome wants you to be solo anyways, so you're going to be solo. Why not just have everything be solo? Yeah. That's... That is literally a slap in the face, because it's a Plaguea banner, and the Plaguean hero is not the one who's highlighting it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a bit rough. Anyways, so yeah, she has the better tome. She has the better A slot skill. And I would even argue she has the better special. It's Reprisal versus Luna. Who cares? But yeah, it's technically even better. Um, chill defense res, so she actually has a B slot. That's that's a really good uh, skill considering, well, you know, her tome. Now that said, dropping their defense doesn't do anything for it, does it? It doesn't. This skill needed to get in one way or another, honestly. Yep. But it does nothing for I mean, technically... It doubles down the defense penalty if for some reason there's like bonfire. If you think about it, if you drop the foe's defense by 10, their bonfire's damage goes down by five. As a yeah. hypothetical. That is oddly specific. Well, you're not, you're not just dropping it by 10, you're dropping it by- 15. Yeah. 10 for the sake of the penalty. So immediately, if you have chill death res on them, their bonfire damage, I guess, goes down by five. Yeah, as an odd application. Mm -hmm. Sure, uh, but while that but, said, instead of speed but, res rain, it's now attack res rain, so it goes into tanking more. Which I mean, that's actually really good. Um, the other thing, chill def res will target tanks, tanks that have both Absolutely. defense and res. Ah, uh, where you need you need it the most, you need to drop on res the most. Fair enough. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, basically everything we said about Tharja can be applied here. <laughs> That's the reality of it. It's just a better tone. Yep. Yeah. That's Katarina with her base it. kit is basically a flying dark shrine. Yeah, if you want to look at it that way. It's I a guess, dark yeah. Dark shrine level three, I think. Yeah, I think so. No, level four. Four. So you have a dark shrine level four basically as a unit if you want to look at it that way, which has some interesting implications. Mm. So I guess the defense penalty itself means marginal to nothing, but yep. it does better target tanks rather than, like, for example, Primaria has great res but low defense, whereas Brave Hector doesn't have the best res but also has good defense. So even though Brave Hector neutralizes his penalties in this example, it would target him a little more often than somebody who's just specifically specking into res. Mm -hmm. Right. Also, of all of target Milla. Right. Also, yeah, of all Milla the penalties is going to get hit by that. Yeah, but also all the penalties dropped on your opponent. Which heroes does this specifically cripple? Hmm. Not Hector. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, how about Blatome heroes? Um, Blaze Home heroes will only get crippled if there's panic. Okay. Yep. Either panic or a lull. Okay, yeah. so they still get their damage output. Fall and Ike, yep. well, not Fall and Ike, but Unity users in general get crippled by this, though. Yeah, well, by the weapons specifically, because these weapons are just straight up anti Unity. So oh. basically, you end up at a net zero. Okay, this is the confusing thing, because earlier in the stream, people were like, this is basically Unity. I'm like, how's that Unity? And then Vic later on said, this is this buffs Fall Nike. I'm like, wait a second. No, this is No, it doesn't. This is the opposite. Like this is anti-Unity. Yeah. Like, if you give Fallen Ike a Tacra's Unity, and he goes up against Tharja, and she gets her weapon effect, congratulations, he's now running a dead A slot. Mm-hmm. And if it's just Chaos Ragnell, that weapon does nothing anymore. Yep. Right, so that's the point. Like, I'm so confused. Uh, the, the, I don't know how- okay. You know what? It's called first reaction and uh, it, it's fine. If I make as many mistakes as you guys make, but that's that's the silly part. Because it's just like, when I first read all those comments, I'm just like, I, <laughs> I'm not sure that's how it works. These, these effects are very confusing because it's like you have so many different variations. Like Freya, Ike, Legion. Yeah. And Hill Flambeau. They all do different things involving doubling something. 
and it's kind of hard yeah. to keep track of what does what. Inverse well, the thing with Legion, with Legion, it's not like an inverse or anything. It's just straight up in combat panic. Right. Which, but the way it's written is in a similar fashion to Fail Found Bow and things like that, so it's confusing. Fair enough. But that said, this does, this unit in particular, barring the fact that solo condition has to be met, is Katarina's just going to be a huge generalist unit, especially with the attack res rain. I imagine that there could be situations where you think you could kill her and she almost gets through priming on levels of bulk. I mean, if it's Katarina's bulk. archetype, she'll have like pretty terrible defense. Oh, she'll have like no defense, but pretty good res and pretty good attack and pretty good speed. Yeah, Katarina, for and... reference, uh, for everybody who forgets, for a while was the best defensive red mage we had, period. Um, I think. What? Didn't she go up against Tharja? <laughs> She actually has more speed than Tharja in the same attack, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, so, just to compare. Um, Katarina. Katarina has 32 attack and 34 speed. Tharja has 32 attack and 34... Okay, they have the same offensive spread. My bad. But Katarina has 32 res to Tharja's 20, which but is better suited for her archetype. Tharja has much more HP. But yeah, I know where you're going. Yeah. Katarina is a little better specialized than Darja, I guess, but they are taught for, at the time, best defensive red mage. Mm -hmm. so we'll have to see how that pans out three years later. Okay, but going on forward, remember earlier we talked about the concept of using those homes for the defensive purposes because you could make those interesting, hap interesting things happen? Now we have a unit that actually makes that work. Makes that work perfectly. Plague and Bow is the same concept, except it's now attack defense, it's physical, he's Carlos, he's a bow unit. This is literally he, asking for it. Yeah. I mean, he comes with attack smoke. He's going to be extremely difficult to put down if he hits anybody. Yep. Right. How Keeping in mind, he's an yep. archer, armor, colorless, who That's is likely going to be say. slow. That's what I was going to say. However, he is the by far the most awkward unit to use as an uh, archer. Yeah? Va don't forget Valentine's Faye exists, and he's now competing with her. Wait. Okay, sure. I, I can see that. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, but the Valentine Faye argument is kind of different, because I would drop Brave Bow on her. Well, what you if don't he has have the same to, exact? But, uh... uh we don't know his stats yet. Okay. He's, but here's yeah. the thing. Raphael. The one thing we know is he's going to be slow. We know he's going to be slow. I expect really high defense, like no res and really high attack. And we know his HP, which well, is actually has... pretty monstrous. Yeah, his HP is the big thing. Out the gate, he has five more HP than Faye and will likely have about the same BST. So it's a matter of how they spec his defense and how much they take out of res. Because Faye has 35 defense, but 38 res. Uh, we'll have to see yeah. how much Raphael takes out of his res. I, I don't defense. think you have res. But this is one of the heroes that I think has a lot of potential. So he is your four-star hero chat. So if you really wanted to, a plus 10 Raphael could be in the books. But the problem is the bow usage is weird. Because a lot of archers end up next to an ally when they're attacking. Just because they can't attack up close. So if they're attacking at distance, a lot of times they're forced to be like up close to an ally. Which would yeah. just take his bow away into doing nothing. Though this does make for one of the best inheritors of close co counter or close foil. I do Thank agree with that, yes, though. Man. Oh, Jesus. Especially the center of set. I just realized, isn't this the same concept as Felix? Except, well, no, no, no. Here's the thing. Same idea-ish. No. They're both armored heroes. They're both three houses. They're both given away for free. They're both archers. Uh, except one has guard and is it attack defense. Attack, defense, plus five, and guard. Yep. With, with, within being two spaces an ally, and now it's, it's B and low. I, I think Felix fits better, but it's it's kind of... Felix is kind yeah. of in a weirder spot because you have to give him unusual inheritance. Raphael, you could give him some simple stuff like Ventral Fighter, Close Counter, or just keep odd follow-up and you have no problems. Felix has to kind of play around a little differently because he's supposed to be fast as an armor. Okay, here's the thing. Like, I actually hate this kid because you got to be not adjacent to an ally. He moves like molasses because he's armor, which is moving one block. And then he ha you have to time it on an odd turn to get the most out of him. It's such... 
lunacy like it, to get all that work out for you it, it's a very specific kit for being able to make things work but when you factor in the effect of the bow i would say pledge and bow is going to be competing if not surpassing spendthrift as far as just the sheer tankiness i agree with the comp competition so spendthrift is attack plus seven to unit attack minus seven to the foe whereas this is attack def minus five to the foe but it also has the added advantage of penalty doubling though at the cost of the condition whereas spendthrift is guaranteed just with a penalty of two cooldown after combat spendthrift is more consistent yep. but its peak potential is lower than the plegian bow um that said of course the spendthrift set is wonderful for an armor that just wants to stay adjacent i still think it works plenty fine on Raphael. um so here's the thing i actually like um felix's bow on Raphael. Raphael way better and i like plegian bow on like anybody else basically like drop this on Norn. No, exactly. That's that's the thing. If once here's the thing, as an armor hero, this is hard. This is very hard to pull off. As an infantry hero, you're fine now. You're you're a okay. You could do whatever you want. I, it's not that bad if you, again if you have the close counter set going on Raphael, because then he can initiate, get the attack smoke off, and then the enemy phase they can't hurt him too much. Okay, you're right about that. If he's your main defensive carry and he's just you're just using him to bait, you'll be fine. Yeah. Like, I could genuinely see Raphael, depending on his res, if it's even, like, 28, being a legitimate top frontline carry for most free to place. No, here's the thing. Krom's bow is super good. You wouldn't remove that. Yeah, no. Yeah. Don't get rid of Rand Greaser. That has way armor too effective. much going for it. It has armor effective, and that's all you need to know. The thing is, like, when I first looked at Krom, I didn't think his stat-wise he was that impressive. It was that bow that just destroyed everything. Like... Yeah, made him ridiculous. He really, no, I don't think I even came close to estimating how Krom's potential was going to turn out. Right. That was a complete surprise, and a terrifying one. Okay, so I'm just going to say, if you have an archer and you for whatever reason didn't give them Felix's bow, which is basically a like Spendthrift Light, I would say, Legion bow is going to be pretty good on them. Spendthrift Light, but even actually more like Spendthrift Light because it's attack minus seven five to the foe as opposed to just defense plus five. So there's a res component. Yeah. If yeah. if you're running a solo Norn hey, build, chat, this might be better. Hey. hey Pika, welcome to the chat. Hey. Yeah. I will say like this is also really good on heroes that do triple solos. Remember that Brunya idea that we had earlier on chat where like you just don't bother close carrying, you just run solo, 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 essentially. Yep. Uh, and then she's suddenly very difficult to kill. Now you you don't fight. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. He's a Legion bow Virion? No. He's also a hero that would prefer his base bow because his base bow is made it with him yeah. in mind. Sudden panic and then also extra stats based on full HP or and max HP. Virion's res is terrible. That's also true. Yeah. So going back to it. Uh, yeah. Uh, triple solo, that though. being, s oh god, Plesian Bow would work better on Legendary Lin. <laughs> legendary Lin. Bow. Anything will work better on Legendary Lin. True. Anything, like, that's not a hard standard to hit. But I genuinely think, as Mad Crush said, this might be the second best, if not in some cases, the best bow to put on just any archer at this point. I agree with that. And especially from the respective Aether Aids, this is going to go, like huge with have debuffs throwing being thrown everywhere the potential is huge obviously you have to deal with the fact that there's pen uh solo condition which especially in defense is hard to manipulate as opposed to spend thrift this won't make a great enemy weapon but in player hands you could legitimately just use this to make a super tank archer no problem yep yep okay but going back to rafael is awkward again one movement Plaguey and Bone uses to be not adjacent, and on, on turns, you get to double. His kit is one of the most difficult ones to use at basis. So, if you want to use his off up attack smoke, I would just suggest you get Felix's bow. And now he just has to be nearby somebody, which is much easier to pull off. Yeah, I mean, from the respect of being solo, I guess the idea is that he goes in, does his initiation, gets the penalties, and then enemy phase, the foe can only hit him once. So even though he's stranded, he has to deal. They have to deal with a 14 attack penalty, 
and the fact that they can only hit him once. Yeah, here's so the thing. It wouldn't be the most productive, but it has serious damage potential. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think you, you can pull something really nice off of all that. But yeah, you, you have to... Then that's like a rafael focused team, and I'm not sure if everyone's down for that. He... The way I'm seeing him is he's probably... I mean, I know... Like you said, not everybody's going to be down for it, though there are some serious Raphael fans out there. Yeah. Um, he is looking to be structured to be a carry Yep. at this point. So I'm going to be really interested in seeing if anyone's going to plus 10 him, because I think he has a potential. He's going to be easily the best Carlos uh, ranged armor hero, I think. You, know, you can argue Faye, but we'll see. We'll see. And I guess Winter Marth, but that's a different argument. Winter Marth is dead. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I like I actually like the special effect for the weapons where it's just kind of the sand scattering everywhere. Well, specifically this one. The other ones have the uh, tome effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, yeah, 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 one, yeah. I, I do like the special effect for this one. Yeah, I like that it kick, just kicks up sand and it gets it. It's rough as course and it gets everywhere on your face. God damn it, Legion. Uh, mm -hmm. Huh? Sand, it's coarse, it's rough. And oh, it's no, that's, that's what you said. Okay, no. 